Okay, I'm gonna try to make this video a bit shorter, quite a bit shorter than the last one. Uh, that one ran a bit longer than I wanted to, uh, but there was a lot to say on that one. Annotation is a pretty important thing. Um, in this video, we're gonna go over external references, and I'm gonna try to make this a lot more clear and concise. Um, external references are pretty darn important to, to learn and know. Um, a lot of different industries will use them in some form or fashion. Um, and an external reference is what it sounds like. It is an external reference of another drawing. So let's say I'm working in one drawing and I need to reference another drawing into this one. Um, I can reference in the, whatever's in that drawing, okay? So let's say, um, let's use this drawing as an example. We're gonna save this drawing as drawing one, okay? We're gonna call it drawing one. And in drawing one, I'm gonna put some text, okay? And I'm gonna make it pretty big. Let's uh, let's make it uh, 20. Drawing one. Okay. Uh, let's turn the columns off. I hate when all this stuff is turned on. Um, where are the columns at? No columns. Okay. And let's get back into it. And we'll call this drawing one. We'll change the text size back down to 10. Okay. So let's say this is drawing one. Okay. And it's going to say drawing one in it. Okay. I'm going to put it right up here. I'm going to hit save. Then I'm going to save as. And I'm going to save this as drawing two. Okay. I'm going to move the text down. Okay, and I'm going to call this drawing two. Now, we know that drawing one has the word drawing one inside of it. Okay? And <clears throat> let's go, let's, in fact, let's open up drawing one. I want to draw a circle. Okay? I'm going to save it. Here's drawing two. I want to reference drawing one into drawing two. And the way I'm going to do that is in the insert tab under um, reference, you can choose attach. This is, this is the section that's going to relate to external references. Okay. Um, you can do, you can use a few of the options here. I don't like using this really as much because, um, or at all actually, because there is a separate reference manager that works so much better. It's got everything you need. Um, just about the way to get there is to expand that, uh, little reference thing at the bottom and hit this arrow and it brings up what's called the external reference manager. Alternatively, I'm going to close this. You can just type in XREF or XR and it brings up that same window. All right. This lets me know that this is drawing one. What I want to do is attach drawing one into drawing two. So I hit the attach button. It's going to bring up uh, a dialog box to find it. So I'm going to find uh, my drawing one with my circle. Okay. Hit open. And what happens now, this is the, 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 one of the, one of the only like really semi even semi complicated dialog boxes you have to deal with for external references. Um, we already have the name and the draw and the drawing selected. You have options to specify the scale, specify the insertion point. This is basically the coordinate for where it's going to come in at. Uh, specify the rotation um, and then the path type. So I'm going to leave the scale at 1. I'm going to leave the insertion point at 0, 0, 0. I don't need to specify a custom coordinate or I don't, I don't want to place it by hand. I want it to come in relative to the 0, 0, 0 coordinate. Um, and the inches are set based off your unit's uh, insertion scale, which I know that's kind of confusing, but you probably shouldn't have to mess with this. I'm going to leave the rotation at zero. Um, the path type can be full path or relative path or no path, but uh, we're going to, you don't want to do no path. So the difference between full path and relative path is that full path will use the exact path uh, to where your file is located. And what happens is if I send this drawing to somebody else and it goes looking for this reference file that I'm about to insert, 
it's going to look for it using the exact same path. Well, obviously their machine doesn't match my machine, so the, the, the directories aren't going to match up. That's where you can use relative path. Relative path just says, hey, as long as these two drawings are in the same folder, we, I can find the reference file. So we'll choose relative path. Um, and then there's uh, your reference type, attachment versus overlay. This is a very important distinction and I'm going to explain uh, visually in a bit. So we'll just hit OK and you'll see drawing one pop into place. So I'm going to close uh, this window. Actually, I'm going to dock this window and a little quick tip. Uh, anytime you want to dock a window like this, uh, just right click and say anchor left or right and make sure it says allow docking. Um, and also turn on auto hide is, is something that's kind of handy to have. If you turn on auto hide, it'll just do this little number. And so that when you dock it, when you anchor left, uh, it hides it here. You can just kind of put your mouse over that and it pops it out. That way it stays out of the way, but it's open. So good thing to know. All right, you can see that my external reference was brought in. Okay, there's drawing one and there's a circle. We are inside of drawing two, but I have referenced in the contents from drawing one. And you can see that it's an XREF2 because it's faded. Um, under the reference area, if you expand uh, reference, you can actually set the extra fading. So you can see that if I uh, increase this or decrease it, which is being kind of stubborn right now, uh, maybe I'll just put in the number manually there. Um, decreasing the fading will make it lighter. Uh, increasing the fading um, will make it darker. So uh, for now, I'll leave it at 50, which is what it was at. Okay. So I've got the contents of drawing one, which is this one, referenced into drawing two. From this, I can draw, um, I don't know, let's do a polygon. We did a polygon earlier. Um, we'll, put a, we'll put a square, but we'll do it from the center here. And we'll make it inscribed of the circle to here, it's fine. All right, so this, this diamond shape is, is in drawing two. You won't see it in drawing one, okay? And the circle is in drawing one, which I've referenced in. So the reason I'm showing you it in this way is because we're gonna save this, <clears throat> and I'm gonna save as um, file, save as, and I'm gonna save this as drawing three now, okay? I'm also gonna open, now that I save it as drawing three, I'm gonna open drawing two back up, Okay, now it's open again. So let's organize these. Drawing one, drawing two, and I'm gonna detach drawing one from here. Okay, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna uh, move this down. We're in drawing three, remember? So I want to erase this diamond, and I want to move this down, and we're gonna call this drawing three now. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to reference in drawing two. Okay, now drawing two already has drawing one referenced into it. And here's the distinction between attachment and overlay. <clears throat> if I attach drawing two into drawing three, okay, and it, right now this doesn't matter, the attachment overlay doesn't matter in this drawing yet. It matters when it's nested. I'm gonna hit okay. You can see that drawing one and two are both attached, okay? That's because I inserted this XREF as an attachment, not an overlay. An attachment will bring in any nested X references, and it's nested because I referenced this one in, right? Drawing two is inside of drawing three, and drawing one is inside of drawing two. That's a nested external reference. I only referenced in drawing two, but one is nested inside of, of two. And this can just keep going on and on. You can just have multiple things. I can reference... Uh, two into three, three into four, four into five, and it'll sh it'll show all the layers as long as they're all set to attach and not overlay. What happens is when I come into drawing two, or sorry, drawing one, the original drawing, right? Oh, no, it is drawing two, I'm sorry. I attached this one, or I inserted this one as an attachment, okay? If I change the type to overlay, hit save, and on drawing three, it's going to ask me to update because I have because I had drawing three open while I modified the external reference, which is drawing two. Um, it's going to ask me to reload. You can also see that it indicates that with a, a yellow triangle, so it wants me to reload. You can either click the link here or you can uh, right click here and say reload. Either way works. 
If I reload, you can see that the circle and drawing one disappeared. It disappeared because I changed the type of that reference from an attachment to overlay. Once you change it to an overlay, this reference no longer gets carried over into anything else when I reference drawing two. So because I reference drawing two and, and uh, drawing one as an overlay, it does not get carried over. So I hope that makes sense. Um, you, if you have it set as an attachment, it's going to bring that attachment along. If you have it set as an overlay, it's not going to bring that XREF along. Okay. Um, and just to kind of go over this menu here, since this is what you're going to work with majority of the time, let's go ahead and bring this back in, uh, <clears throat> drawing one as an attachment. You can from here also change the uh, XREF type attach or overlay. So you can either do it here or you can do it uh, up, up here with the right click. All right, I'm going to save this drawing. I'm going to reload with the, the link here. And, it's, and it brought it back because I changed it to an attachment. So within this menu, um, is a few different things. This is the button where you can attach drawings, okay? But on top of that, if you expand it, you can see you can attach other things, uh, images, uh, DWF files, DGN files, PDF, point clouds, coordination models, if you know what those things are. Um, you can attach those things as well. Um, a majority of the time, you're probably only gonna ever attach drawings and possibly images. Um, this one here is to just refresh um, the status of not not reload the, the references, but refresh the status of those references. There are times when you won't know. Maybe you maybe you're working on a big server, and a lot of people are working on drawings, and um, some people have edited some drawings, and you don't know if they've been updated. Hitting refresh will just check to see has there been any updates to those references that you've or those drawing files that you've referenced in. And if there has, then you can say reload all references, and it will reload them to see what their status is. So, um, this one here, these issues your help. This one's blocked out. And honestly, there it is. Um, yeah, if it's not, it's not really, I can't remember for the life of me what this is. I'm going to switch over to tree mode, uh, next to show you what this is. So you have two modes here. You have the, uh, list view and you have the tree view and the tree view shows you the hierarchy. See in this mode, you can't. It just shows both uh, drawings as being inserted, but you can't tell which one is the parent uh, reference. You know that it's drawing two, but if there's a huge list of external references, you wouldn't know which one is the parent. Um, what you can do is switch to tree view, and tree view shows you which drawing is the parent. You can see that drawing two is the parent, and drawing one is nested inside of drawing two. So you've got a huge list of drawings. You can see which drawings are the parent drawings. This is important to know because although I can right click and detach drawing two, I cannot detach just drawing one because it is nested inside of drawing two. If I want to get rid of drawing one, I have to get rid of drawing two. This way, if you, again, if you have that long list of drawings, you don't have to figure out which ones you can detach and which ones you can't detach. Tree view shows you that. Um, one of the main differences here though is that you cannot, and I don't have another one to, to, to show this on, but you can't select multiple external references like you can in the tree view. So, uh, sorry, like you can in the list view. So just keep that in mind. But this is this does come in handy. Um, and you'll see other information. You can see the size of your external references. This is also an easy way to see the size of your current drawing. Um, and it'll show you here whether it's an attach or overlay. In addition to um, that icon will change when it's set to overlay. So keep that in mind. Just easy way to tell that. Um, the date that it was last saved, and of course the 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 path. These are relative paths, so they have this little dot here that lets you know that it's a relative path. And you may see a few dots and slashes depending on how you saved it. So uh, you can even do preview images, and down here you can choose the preview to see quickly uh, which one is which. When you're looking at a huge list of drawings, it can be helpful, uh, or you can switch back to your details or just minimize that entirely. Um, and you can see, look. I'm, I'm, I'm selected on this one, nothing's down here, right? But I select this one, and now it says nested references selected. Can I change path, name, or type? So you really can't do much to a nested drawing other than uh, change. Like, I can't do anything to drawing one other than change drawing two. All right, so um, <clears throat> let's get into ref editing. So 
let's say I'm in drawing one, uh, two, and let's say I want to edit this drawing, okay? Assuming that this, this drawing one is closed. I'm going to close that drawing out. Now, now since it's closed, um, I could go hunt it down and, and open it up and, uh, and start making changes to it. I could even come in here and right click and open, which by the way, I never finished these things. Um, you have open to open this drawing. You have attach uh, to attach a new extract. You can unload it to make it disappear. You can reload it to make it reappear. You can detach it. You can bind it. Binding converts the extract into a block. It no longer is an extract. It's no longer, it basically takes whatever was in drawing one, copies it into this drawing as a block um, and then whatever layers were in, were associated with that uh, drawing, those get brought over as well. Change the XREF type. You can change the uh, the path type um, and choose a new path if it moves. And uh, I think the find and replace is kind of the same same deal. If you want to replace this XREF with another one, um, most likely, um, say you have like an XREF, you don't want to detach and reattach. You want to just use everything exactly the same, but you want to replace it with a different file. You can do that here. All right. Um, but reference editing. So let's say I don't want to actually open this drawing up and go edit it. You can do what's called a reference edit. That is double clicking it. And, um, you can double click it again, as long as in your options menu, use your preferences. You've got double click editing enabled. Uh, if you don't, when you select it, you'll have to go to, um, do they even have, yeah, edit reference in place. So you can choose edit reference in place or you can double click or you can type in ref edit. Okay, so I'm just gonna double click, easiest way to do things. It's gonna give me this uh, window here um, and then say okay. It's letting me know what I'm selecting basically because there could be nested objects inside the XREF like blocks, for example. All right, <clears throat> you'll notice what's happened is I'm in drawing two, but drawing two down here, the, the contents of drawing two got faded and the contents of drawing one became more prominent because I'm actually I'm actually editing drawing one through drawing two without having to open drawing drawing one. What's uh, nice here is I can't accidentally move drawing two. It's locked. Okay, anything inside drawing two is locked. So let's say I want to maybe change this to drawing zero, and I want to move this circle up to here. Okay. When I am finished, and this is kind of a silly thing, um, rather than getting its own dedicated menu, it tacks it onto the end of whatever one of these menus you happen to be in. So it just puts it over to here. Uh, when you're finished, either discard your changes or just say save changes. Uh, all references will be saved. And there it is. I've edited that reference. We're, we're back to looking at it as an XREF because it's faded again. I'm back in drawing two. And the changes have been made without having to go open the drawing up. Super handy if you just want to quickly make some changes and you're not maybe you're not going to be in the file for very long. You just got to move something around. Uh, like, oh, I had to move this circle. Okay, well, now I have to move this uh, um, diamond. Okay. <clears throat> so that's that for reference editing. The last thing I want to show you as far as the XREFs are concerned is going to be clipping. Um, I won't go too in-depth into clipping. But I'll show you real quick what it what it uh, what it does. You can just say clip. And then and by the way, if you when you hover over these, if you got tooltips enabled, you'll see the command uh, underneath these things. Um, you can type in that command, uh, and it should in, uh, invoke that. So you can instead of you can either hit clip or you can type in clip. Just you know if you'd rather if you'd rather not go hunt it down or you forgot where it was, you can just type it in. This is why I typically use commands in the command line. All right. So let's say I want to clip this. Why would you want to clip an XREF? Well, let's say you have a huge, huge XREF that you brought in as a reference, and and you're you're just working in a small portion of that of, of where that of what of that XREF, you know. But you've got all the stuff that that comes in, um, and you don't need all that stuff. And it, it it's huge. It takes up a lot of space. Maybe it makes your computer run slow, um, or whatever. You can clip that so you can so that you only view what's inside your clipping boundaries. Let's select this XREF as a, as a, uh, as one we want to clip out. And let's say I only want to view the text. I don't want to see anything else outside the text. All right. I want to get rid of this circle as part of my XREF viewing area. You have a few options down here, but the one we're going to do is create a new boundary. And it's going to ask you, do you want to select a polyline? I can have like an existing polyline that I want to clip. Uh, do you want to make your own polygonal, um, 
uh, clipping area. Like I can make it with multiple weird points, but it's still a polygon. Uh, do I want to do a rectangular? And then the invert clip you can do after the fact. So let's say I want to do rectangular. Just right click. And I'm going to draw a clipping boundary around this box. When I do this, the circle is going to disappear because it's clipping everything outside the boundary. And it's gone. What you can do is invert that clip should you want to by clicking this arrow when you select uh, the, the, the boundary. Click this arrow and it now clipped out. Uh, everything inside this is now missing and what's outside is showing. So this arrow may not be available on previous versions. Um, I don't know if it's on 2016. It may not be on even older versions. Um, so if it's not there, sorry. Um, so there you go. There's my clipping boundary. And if you notice, if I click the boundary, it selects like the whole XREF. That's because essentially the clipping boundary is part of the XREF. Um, like in a way, it, atta it kind of attaches this clipping boundary to the XREF. Um, you, can, uh, you can use clip again to modify that XREF by clip, uh, clicking the XREF or the boundary and you can turn it off or turn it back on and it saves it. You don't have to redo it. You can regenerate to a brand new one, whatever you want. You can delete it entirely. So now you have to regenerate it. If you click it, it's gone entirely. So there's certain options you can go through, but clipping is great for just being able to look at a small portion of an XREF if you, if you happen to be dealing with a very large external reference. So, and I think that's it. That's really all you, uh, you have to worry about for the most part um, for external references, but get used to them. They are super important. Uh, get used to working with them, um, and practicing, you know, um, a good example, uh, firsthand experience is what I used to do. When I used to do architectural drafting is we would create a floor plan and, um, and then we would use that floor plan as the basis. We would reference that floor plan into other drawings. We would do, Maybe like a, a roof framing plan and an electrical lighting and power plan, um, maybe an HVAC plan. And we would always have the floor plan as a reference. And for the other drawings, we would draw the stuff on top of the XREF, but we wouldn't have to worry about messing up anything in the XREF because it's like a, it's a block almost essentially. It's an entity that cannot be edited um, as it is. You have to go into the original drawing to edit it. So. Um, you're using it as a reference. That's what references are for. Um, and you're going to use those, you're going to use them a lot. Um, uh, we'll just, I mean, depending on the industry you're in, I'm still using them all the time. And, and now I'm using, you know, a lot of 3d models as references, uh, for the type of work that I'm doing now. So definitely get used to doing references. All right. I hope this video was shorter. <laughs> I know that, uh, it's kind of rambling on, but that's just, uh, extra man. Gotta learn them. <laughs>